The NBA has a flopping problem. Now you can see he came right up the middle and found, and now all of a sudden, a little acting here. Yeah. My ball, no doubt about it. And That's a common out. Foul. That's right. And I'm glad that the referees. Seeing a guy who is seven foot tall, almost 280 pounds, fall to the ground like a train hit him after barely being touched has made the game of basketball seem more like a Hollywood movie than an actual sport itself. Because of this, the NBA has made it a key issue in this year's offseason to stop flopping. And they even created an entirely new rule just to slow the flopping down. This offseason, the NBA has instituted a new rule that gives the refs the power to call in-game flops. When a player is now called for a flop, they are assessed a non-sportsmanlike technical and the opposing team will be rewarded with a free throw. And the rule is great in theory, but the problem is no one knows the difference between a flop and an actual foul. In real time, it's almost impossible to make the right call. I mean, these are the best athletes in the world going at full speed. You don't know who actually touched who, so a lot of times these flops do look like fouls. But fans, we don't understand that because we have the beauty of replay. So I decided to conduct my own experiment. I was going to give my friends who watch basketball a couple of plays and tell me if it's a flop or a foul. I just kind of wanted to see if everyone would call it the same or would there be some differences on who thinks something's a flop and who thinks something's a foul. Into the hands of Bruce Brown, Jokic comes up to get it. Deflected by James. And an offensive foul called on Jokic. A, a complete embellishment. That's a good counterpoint. No. He didn't need to do all that. 50% of that was a performance. Look how far he's fallen. And I don't think Jokic's pushing the ball that far. But he did get the call, so. That's a flop. That's your king. Flop. It was a foul for sure but he sold it to where they had to, They, I think they reviewed that play, didn't they? Flop, that's definitely a flop. No ifs, ands, or buts. Speed against Andre. And beat in front, soft hook, hits it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> flop. Flop. Big flop. All performance. And he knows it. That's a flop, and that shouldn't be a foul call. Paul, a little shake and bake, drives past him, left-handed layup, it's good! Gorgeous move from Paul, and then Cousins, tough for Cousins on that. Now here he... <laughs> <laughs> there was contact, but definitely a flop. That one was a call, and then sale. I told you, man, you already know that was a flop. Chris Paul is well known for that. I think that's a, I'm gonna say it's a flop. And Thanasis is an irritant. And, and he did. I mean, technically, like in the rules, it's a foul, but like, a hundred percent flop. Push the hell out of him. That one. That one's a foul for sure. That one's a foul. I'm gonna say that's a foul. Platoon call the best passer for the Clippers. Leonard drives, goes inside, lays it up, and an offensive foul is called. And they don't have a challenge yet left. Oh my gosh, that's a flop. But he played the refs nice though. That was a flop, but he played the refs nice. Oh, no, no, that was a flop. That was for sure a flop. He still had it in the chicken bone, elbow bone area. So that definitely was a flop. I understand why they called it, but that's a flop for sure. But but I will say, that's only a flop because I watched the replay. If I'm not watching the replay, that's definitely a foul. Now, my friends aren't NBA referees or anything like that at all, but you can already see the inconsistencies between multiple people who love the game of basketball if something's actually a flop or not. And my friends had the luxury of a replay and had no pressure whatsoever on making the right call. We are now going to judge not whether you did or didn't get hit, but whether you did or didn't over exaggerate the impact of the hit. That should not be a technical. The problem with this new rule is that it is what the referee determines is a flop is what they're going to call. Every referee has their own definition of what a flop really is. De'Aaron Fox had a great take on this on Twitter. Don't call the foul. Already don't know if it's a foul or not, but let's give them more power to also give out a tech if they think it's a flop. The key word there 
is stink. Every referee will have their own determination of what a flop is or isn't. So it leaves us fans, players, and everyone else in the basketball world wondering, what is a flop? By definition, flopping is when a player intentionally falls after little or no physical contact by an opposing player in order to get a foul call. This often gets confused with selling a call, which is when a player is making sure that the referee sees the illegal contact happening and might put a little show on to make sure that you know that he got hit. And as I say that, you can obviously see the contradicting in my words. If a player is actually hit and he falls to the ground, well, that's a foul, call it. But how do we know if he was actually hit or if he just fell to the ground because he wanted a call? And a big misconception with flopping is that it only happens on the defensive end when it is just as prevalent in the offensive side of the game too. Offensive players often like to do this thing where when they're dribbling the basketball, you'll see them hit their head back or push their head back. And almost in essence that someone is swiping up or hitting them in the head. Great guys at this are Chris Paul and Dennis Schroeder. They are elite at doing this type of play. Go watch any Chris Paul game. You're going to see him do it 10 to 15 times a game. Another way they do it is with their jump shot. When they're in midair, they tend to kick their foot out to make sure that the defender hits their foot and messes up their landing so they can get the foul call. There's no greater player at this than James Harden himself. As you can watch videos of when he has a wide open three, his feet kind of go up and down the same spot. But anytime there's anyone remotely close to him, he will more likely kick out that foot and draw the foul call and end up with a four point play. Now on the defensive end, it usually occurs when someone is guarding a guy like Shaquille O'Neal who is going to overpower you. So you need some way to stop him. And Vlade Divac was the king of this. When he was guarding Shaq, he would act like a train hit him every single time. In hindsight, Shaq is huge, so like he probably did feel like he got hit by a train, but regardless, he was usually flopping when he did it. A more common way we see players flop today now is when defenders are going over ball screens. They will tend to fall or frail in an attempt to get a call from the referee. A great example of this is once again, Dennis Schroeder, who actually talked about this on the oddest of all places, Aiden Ross's live stream. If they set illegal screens, like sometimes you got to show them, you know what I'm saying, that they uh, move it on the screen or something. If you don't do it, then yeah, they're not going to call it. Now, there are other ways that players flop in the league, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but these seem to be the most popular ones that you see every single night. Flopping is hurting the way that basketball is supposed to be played, which is why the NBA created this new rule, to stop flopping, to put it into flopping altogether. But... This is not the first time the NBA has made something to put in stop to flopping. In fact, basketball officials have been dealing with this flopping issue ever since the 1940s. In 1942, Western colleges were fed up with players consistently looking to get foul calls on the court by deceiving the officials. Players would try anything they could to get a foul call, even falling to the ground after just a little bit of contact. So all the Western colleges got together and were like, hey, how are we gonna stop these people from just randomly falling on the ground? Cause obviously the referees don't know if it's a foul or not. So they came up with a genius plan. They put the referees in what they called a bird's nest behind the basket. Essentially what they did was have no referees on the court at all and had the officials at a farther view. So it was harder for the players to deceive the referees at all. And funny enough, it actually worked. Bob Motor of Southern Oregon said this, I found from the start I couldn't get away with some of the tricks I used to use, so I quit trying. Even the referees said that this change of them sitting behind the basket was actually nice. It cut down on petty hitting, hacking, and even stopped flopping. So great, they saw flopping in 1942, which was four years before the NBA was officially formed. What happened? Well, I couldn't find anything. There's no report on why this idea didn't catch on and why the NBA didn't decide to use this when they got into the league in 1946. Maybe they didn't have a flopping issue, but that simply wasn't true either. In fact, 
In the 1960s, Celtics great Freight Ramsey was notoriously known for his ability to deceive the refs, get called whenever he wants, and of course, flop. There's even this funny story where the late great Bill Russell, rest his soul, talked about this time where Frank Ramsey got a call so early in the game that he had to legitly warm up before shooting free throws. Like, the game just started and he had to take practice shots before shooting free throws because he was still cold. Ramsey was known around the league as being the master of getting foul calls. There was no one better than him. He was so great, so talented at getting these foul calls and deceiving the referees that he said, hey, I'm going to write a book over it. <laughs> the book was titled Smart Moves by a Master of Deception. And the entire book breaks down how to properly deceive officials into getting any foul call you want. This is back in the 1960s. A passage from his book reads, Drawing fouls, Sheffley requires the ability to provide good, heartwarming drama and direct it to the right audience. I never forget where the referees are when I go into an act. The most reliable eye catcher is the pratfall, particularly on defense. When everything else fails, I fall down. It utilizes reverse psychology on the referees. The man with the ball starts in good position, but then creates a foul deliberately by bumping before he shoots. It happens so fast though that the officials believe the defensive man must have been fouled. On the theory that nobody would be looking for trouble if he was set up for a shot. And that's just one passage from the book. There were many passages that are used in today's game. As you can imagine, the NBA didn't like this at all. It made the league look more like a show than an actual sport, which is probably the reason why most of you guys watch this have never heard of him or never seen the book, even though he was the first great six man we have ever seen in the NBA. I also think it's very funny that back in the 60s that Frank Ramsey's own head coach at the time was a big anti-flopping guy. They're teaching him how to fall. They teach the defense how to fall. In this case, he's on the offense. They're teaching him how to fall. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, very, very much opposed to this type of basketball. So as you can see, flopping was around in the 1960s. So let's keep tracking along. And let's get to the 90s. Every time I talk to someone about my favorite player, LeBron James, you know the number one thing they tell me, other than the fact that he has a terrible finals record? He flops. They go, well, Jordan never flopped. That's what I hear. They didn't flop in the 90s. There was no flopping in the 90s. It's even funny. I was reading this article of this NBC guy who talked about what he missed of the 90s. And this is what he said. I watched an entire NBA playoff game from start to finish. And not one player flopped or exaggerated contact to get a call. They just played hard. I missed that. No, no flops at all. What about this play? Or this flop. I'm not sure what game he watched or if he just made this up to make the 90s sound better than they were, but there was definitely flops in the 90s. The NBA didn't magically solve this issue that a guy in the 60s literally wrote an entire book about over into the 90s. It never went away. In fact, the 90s was probably the first time the league really recognized that they had a flopping issue on their hands. In 1997, the NBA implemented this four foot dotted line around the basket. You know that little line that is around the center of the hoop on most basketball courts? Yeah, the restricted area is what they call it in the NBA. Well, according to multiple articles, that area was created to stop flopping around the basket so that players wouldn't get hurt. But I can't 100% confirm that that's the reason it was created because there's also multiple articles that said it was made so when players aggressively attack the rim to stop all fouls around the basket altogether. So believe what you want to believe if it was created to stop flopping or if it was just created to stop fouling in general, you can do your own research. But for the sake of my video, my point, they created it to stop flopping. In addition, players like Dennis Rodman were known for their flopping in the 90s. And yes, even the legendary Michael Jordan who can't do anything wrong also has been caught. In the, in the late 90s into the early 2000s, we had our first ever king of flopping himself, Vlade Divac. And ask anyone that watched Baffle back then, they will tell you that Vlade Divac was the king of flops. 
He claims he only started flopping so he could have a way to stop Shaquille O'Neal. And it was such a known thing that they even joked about it years later in this video. And after the 1990s and the early 2000s, the trend only grew as the NBA expanded. And with the rapid growth of media around the NBA, fans started to notice the flopping at an alarming rate. And that's when the NBA once again decided to step in and stop their flopping epidemic. Ahead of the 2012-2013 season, the NBA announced that players that were found flopping in a game would be hit with a fine. The first violation was just a warning and the second one would be $5,000. With each violation, it increased all the way up to $30,000 if the flopping continued. So great idea, the NBA found a way to stop flopping. No, it was great in theory. No one ever gave out violations. In fact, in the first year that it was out, only 31 flops were called for fines. And some of the most prominent floppers that we have in the game got little to no fines at all. LeBron James never got fined. Chris Paul never got fined. James Harden received one fine. Fast forward to 2023 and it's extremely rare to even hear about someone getting a flopping fine nowadays. It's almost like a yeah, oh yeah they do get fined for flopping I guess. It's not a thing that anyone really thinks or worries about at all. The NBA created this rule that basically no one used and no one enforced and flopping only got worse. So as we know, now the NBA has this new rule. And before I tell you guys if I believe it's gonna work or not, let me tell you why players decide to fall to the ground like a train hit them in the first place. The simple answer, and, and this is the simplest, simplest way I can put it, because it works. Now, I want you guys to get out of your fan mind and think of a mind of a player. Why risk giving up two points when you could flop and potentially get the ball back? If you're in need of a bucket and it's crunch time, why leave it up the chance that your teammate might get a stop if someone's gonna set a screen that might be a little illegal and you just decide, hey, I'm gonna fall right here to make sure we get this ball back. A successful flop can literally change the direction of our entire game. And for all you people that are still like, no, I would never flop. It is against the game. I love sports. I have integrity for myself. And they're flopping, they're losers, blah, blah, blah. And you wanna take this high road, you will never play for me. Because that means you don't wanna win bad enough. Me, I'm flopping. We get the ball, I'm flopping. He hits me, flop, give me the ball. You wanna win, play with the times. And if the times say to flop, you better be flopping. If you look at scoring nowadays, 20% of players' points comes from the free throw line. Look at James Harden, who had an historic run in Houston. There was conversations during this run that people were saying he was the greatest scorer ever. And if not the greatest, at least top five. He was literally putting up video game numbers, 45 points, 20 assists, 60 points, 15 assists. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was very fun to watch. But go look at his free throw numbers. He holds the record for most consecutive free throws made in a game at 24. Do you think that during that game when he had 24 free throws, he got fouled 12 times? No, James Harden was flopping. But did that stop people from saying he's one of the greatest scorers? Does that stop people from now when they talk back about great offensive runs and they say James Harden and Houston Rockets, they say, oh, well, he was flopping for those points. No, they don't. They say he was a bucket. And his great scoring outbreaks have influenced the younger generation and they have too learned how to flop. Trey Young, Luka Doncic, Devin Booker, and many other players. At the end of the day, you like it or not, flopping is just smart basketball. You are essentially giving your team more possessions and more free throws in the game. You can literally change the outcome of a game with just one flop. Personally, like I said, I love when my team flops. It, do it doesn't bother me at all that LeBron James is known for the flopping. I mean, it's so bad at times that people nicknamed him LaFlop. History is written by the victors. If we won, who cares? I ain't gonna talk about my flopping. The biggest misconception is that star players need to flop to be effective, which is simply not true. The problem is there's no reason not to flop in the NBA. Someone's backing me down and I can hit and you're gonna reward me. Why would I stop doing it? Which brings us to the new flopping rule that I spoke about earlier in the video. With this new unsportsmanlike technical foul, I 
personally believe it will not work. You're essentially giving more power to the referees who already don't know if it's a foul or a flop to now give out technical fouls over it. And I think that this new rule is just going to fall in its place. So I thought, what are some ways that I would solve flopping if I was in the NBA? And I think I have some pretty good ideas. Instead of punishing the player for flopping, instead of handing out a fine here, fine there, fine there, which we all know doesn't matter because these players make millions of dollars. How about we punish both sides? If we're gonna give LeBron James a technical for flopping, how about we fine or suspend the referee for calling the flop? Because if only LeBron gets in trouble and I made the wrong call, I won't feel no repercussions. I'm gonna make the wrong call again. If I feel that repercussion, then I won't call it. My other idea is if you don't want to punish the referees, well, give the coach the ability to challenge flops. With the current rule, coaches cannot challenge if it was a flop or not if called, and I know it will slow down the game of basketball, but adding that extra layer of review can help slow down the flopping issue that you have. And my last option, which I think could be the most effective, is reinstate hand checking and other defensive calls. When you got rid of hand checking, it made physical defenders have no way of having an advantage over offensive talents. Let's take a guy like Marcus Smart. Now, Marcus Smart is known for his flopping, right? If Marcus Smart has to go guard James Harden and he's a big physical defender, how is he supposed to guard Harden? What is he supposed to do? He can't put his hand on him, can't get into his breathing space because that's a foul if he jump shoots. All he can do is fall to the ground. If you allow defensive players to be physical again, they would stop flopping. At the end of the day, flopping is just as much a part of basketball as dribbling the basketball itself. It's been around since the creation of time. And if the NBA does not stop it right now, it will only evolve as the game evolves itself. Be honest with me in the comments, just between me and you. You don't have to tell your friends. I won't tell nobody. Trust me. Would you flop in order to win a game? Honestly, I think flopping is one of the like funniest topics to discuss with the older generation basketball fans because they swear to you, they swear to you, I would never flop, that's against the game. And I'm just like, if I put you in that position, you're falling to the ground too. Like you're, you're gonna fall to the ground. I, I, I hate that ideology that like, oh, well, I wouldn't flop, I'm better than that. No, you're not, you're not better than that. You, you probably flop at your pickup game at your local gym right now. You're not better than that. Come on, we, we all would flop. We all would flop. Stop blaming, stop putting all the blame on the players. I understand it's, it's out of hand right now. It is out of hand, I agree it's out of hand, but we have to put blame on all sides of the aspect. It's not just a player's fault. If it works, it works. That's why they're gonna do it. I don't know, but y'all have a great one um, and I'll see y'all later, bye.